Trinidad and Tobago has a very important economic and strategic position. The visit to Trinidad. No, this great relationship. The kinds of assistance from China. 2.2 billion TT dollars to repay to China. Docking facilities in Labrie. Soon be known as Chinatown. For a gift from China. 201 million US dollar claim. Signed a 1.1 billion dollar contract with Chinese firm. This video explores Trinidad and Tobago's growing dependency on China. And then the fresh cheese chicken. They got the eight six eight million. Yeah, that's it. One of them. Just behind me, right there, is the largest Chinese embassy in all of the Caribbean. The Chinese embassy was not always in this current location here. This embassy was moved here and upgraded in November 2018. The embassy with its large swimming pools and tennis courts was praised by the Chinese ambassador for coming as a result of fruitful relationships between both Trinidad and China. That's a palace. So Trinidad and Tobago is already over two billion dollars in debt to China. That's nearly half of the total country's debt deficit. Despite all of this, China is going to pour more money into the country and conduct more of its gigantic construction projects. The existing debt to China is for multi-million dollar construction projects that have taken place in the past. Napa, Sapa, the Brian Lara Stadium, the Velodrome and Aquatic Center, the Coover Children's Hospital, and that's only to list a few. In 2011, China invested 5.7 billion TT dollars into the company Atlantic LNG and acquired a 10% stake in the organization. We're dependent on China per se. I think that um, we have an interest in them because, in terms of um, the loans that uh, are very much appealing to the government, like with a uh, majority of the countries that go to China for loans, then you have um, somewhat of a concessionality, meaning that they give you um, at a cheaper interest rate or something and that is more appealing for countries as opposed to going through the stringent conditions of the IMF and the World Bank. That is sort of why um, countries then pursue China more than, and, and I mean it, it goes both ways, um, China pursues countries as well, it's not just that um, developing countries are going to China, it, it, it's a back and forth. <laughs> When Kamala Bissad Bissessa was the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, the Chinese president paid the Caribbean a visit and promised that he would pump a lot more money into the region. I certainly did not frown when the new Chinese president told us in Port of Spain recently that, um, that China was going to in invest three billion uh, US dollars in the Caribbean. 
this is a promise that he has kept 100%. We've seen massive infrastructure in Jamaica. We're seeing a lot more stuff that is going to be coming to Trinidad. We have the massive lab report that is set to be um, built. We have the redesigning of the Port of Spain General Hospital. We had a HDC uh, homes that were going to be built that was canceled. And we have other things coming as well from the Chinese um, government. This is another worry factor right here because in countries in the past where China has pumped billions of dollars, once those countries fail to pay back that debt, China will then seize that infrastructural development and also in many cases the land surrounding it. The term death trap then is um, one of the terms that the Chinese they, they're negating and it, for them it, it's not seen as a death trap but um, like in the instance of what happened in Singapore in parts of Africa it's also happening where it is countries are given this nice package yes and you get um some sort of incentive then of um money uh, materials or um labor to build certain projects and then it comes down to the fact that countries cannot repay their loan and that becomes a problem because in the case of sri lanka they had to one give up their port they also had to give up fifteen thousand acres of land the reality is that Africa has suffered greatly in the hands of its colonial masters. What we face today is a new Europe in Africa, and that's China. Even though they negate the whole idea of a debt trap, it's being seen um, in the international system then that um, China is pushing forward a, a debt trap or debt trap diplomacy then, in a sense. have a 50-50 perspective then based on interviews that would have been done. For some people, they are worried. Um, they want to know how many generations are going to have to pay out this loan. What are the concessionalities? Um, what, how long or what are the terms of repayment? That sort of thing. But then on the other side, you do have um, people who are welcoming the opportunities in terms of like, for example, um, the Liberty dry docking facility. There were members of the community who they were very much welcoming in the sense that they were looking for um, employment, local employment within the villages around um, the dry docking facility. Um, they were also looking forward to a uh, greater development there. Now, people can either see this entire thing, China investing heavily in Trinidad, as either good or bad. Good for employment opportunities, perhaps, and developmental opportunities, but perhaps negative in the fact that we may not be able to pay back those loans and see what has happened to other countries happen to us as well. Regardless, it's important to be aware about these issues. My name is James Lancer. I'm going to be doing a few videos on this entire topic. I would really appreciate if you head over to 868 Media on YouTube and subscribe. Also, you can check out 868 Media on other platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I will leave all of the links in the description of the video down below.